when there's a problem in your home the first place you go to is not marriage counseling the first place you go to when there's a problem in your marriage is not marriage counseling go to the word of god go to the word both of you find out what does the word say about this situation if you do that all the time you will never need counseling you will never accept two of you are ignorant of the word of God. Then you can come. Let us show you. Because at the end of the day, marriage counseling is we showing you the word of God. <laughs> is it not true? Is we showing you the word of God. That's what marriage counseling is. So if you too can see the word of God for yourself, you may never need marriage counseling. Now let me emphasize a point here because, you know, I have discovered that some men find it difficult to forgive their wives. A man that finds it difficult to forgive his wife is either he himself has not received forgiveness from Jesus or he is suffering from a mental condition. He's suffering from identity crisis. I have seen husbands who say to me, I cannot forgive my wife. I have made up my mind. She must go. She must go. Go where the marriage is over what a new heart i will give to you a new spirit i will put within you i will take away from you the stony heart and give you what every child of god has a heart of flesh there is no condition in your marriage that warrants a hard heart except you're not born of god except you are not born of God and sometimes when I even look at the situation between the husband and wife it's not even what is worth wasting time on it's not and let me tell you if you think by divorcing your wife and marrying another one it will be okay when you marry the second one the same thing that broke the first one will break the second one and once you start enjoying divorce you will never stop the moment you start enjoying it you do the first one you enjoy it you do the second one you get away with it that is how the process will continue because you will no more be resilient you will no more be determined you will no more be enduring you will no more be long suffering you will no more be patient once the marriage doesn't look like what you want you just say ah, it's okay i'll leave it i'll leave it What the word of God teaches us is perseverance. As a good soldier of Christ, endure hardship. Endure hardship. So if you're in a marriage that is not working, make up your mind to make it work. No matter what you have to endure. Endure it until it works. A guy came here, a pastor. He said, Dr. Damina, I want to divorce my wife. I said, why? He said, because everywhere I've gone for counseling, they told me my wife is a witch. And I know she is a witch. How many of you know there are pastors who delight in those kind of things? They use it to control people's families. So I said to him, yes. You are a pastor, right? He said, yes. I said, very good. He said, my, but my wife is a witch. I said, oh no, she's not only a witch. She is witchcraft. She is a headquarter of witchcraft. He said, do you know her? I said, no, I don't know her. But from the way you have spoken, I can discern. I, I have, my spiritual eyes have opened. Your wife is the headquarter of witchcraft. He said, mm, you are the correctest man. You even saw before. So that means you know what I'm going through. I say very well. He said, so what do you say? I said, no. <laughs> what I have to say is very simple. What did you say you are again? He said, I'm a man of God. What is your ministry? To set the captives free, right? He said, yes. To free people from the bondage of Satan. He said, yes. To preach the gospel and bring people to freedom he said yes start with her now <laughs> your wife is the first crusade ground set her free clear her use her to prove that you have a ministry then anywhere you go to preach give testimony of her first before you preach he looked at me like this <laughs> that's to say you have got me i said that's what to do he left my office angry because he doesn't want the truth if your wife is a devil and you're a man of god free her from being a devil 
minister to her. The same way you will minister to another person's wife or another person's child or another person's husband. They are all like your wife. Don't tell me you have a ministry and you cannot put it on your wife. No. I pray for the sick, they get healed. But the first people I pray for in my house, they are here where I'm talking. My family, I lay hands on them. I don't allow the devil to jump around my family like it's a football field. No way. No. Once the devil is trying something in my house, I take authority. I take authority. I refuse him. Not under my watch. Not under my watch. I take authority. A mama does what she needs to do as a wife. She gives us the, the healthiest food we can find. The healthiest. I can tell you confidently, under her watch, none of us have been admitted in the hospital ever. No, not my children, not me. We've never had an occasion to sleep in any hospital for a night. Not even a night. No. Because she sees to it that we eat healthy. Mama can read for Africa when it comes to diet. She can read for Africa. She knows the combinations. Medical doctors salute her. Even though she didn't read it. She knows what to combat. The moment you say, I have a pain here. Mama will say, one, two, three, put it there. It will be okay. When you take it, it's okay. We have never had to go and sleep in the hospital anymore. She ensures that our nutrition is okay. You see me jumping here like a five-year-old boy. Somebody say, Papa, what is your secret? <laughs> Over somewhere there. <laughs> yes. That's a secret. And that's the job of a wife. She ensures we don't eat nonsense. We don't. If you hear my children complaining at any time of a headache or pain, know that they ordered food from outside the house. The moment they start complaining, the first question is, did you order food from outside? Yes. Okay, stop. Flushing will start. That day we will flush. Everybody will flush from the food we ate outside. After the following day, everybody is fine. Why? Because she studied our bodies she studied our composition and i've discovered which foods work for us and she gives us those foods we eat i, I don't like staying outside my home beyond two days two days is too much and the reason is not because of anything it's simply because people don't know how to handle me outside my home they don't know how to handle me first of all my diet is funny i'm not a normal person <laughs> you can't do what i do and be normal is it true? I'm not a normal person. That's why I don't eat out with people. Because the things they will order is not what I will order. When they finally order and I order my own, I'll be looking like I'm not a human being. So there's no point we go and eat out. Except I'll just drink water or tea with a few biscuits and that's it. But food? No. I don't trust anybody with my food like I trust her. So I don't stay out too long in case your food is not working for me. I can fast for two days and still be alive. I'm coming very fast to recover all. That's where it should be. A husband should be in a hurry to go home because he knows everything he needs for his life is at home. Not that a man is hanging out till 2 a.m. He wants a wife to sleep first so he can have peace. Then he will stroll into the house and come and sleep. No. Home should be home. A woman should make home home. Make the house conducive. Make it comfortable. Let there be peace in the house. So that when the husband comes, there can be peace. And also the husband should make the home a home. Because if you're always beating your wife, that home is no more a home. No husband has a scriptural right to strike his wife with his hand. No husband has that. No husband. That's intimidation. That is witchcraft intimidation is witchcraft that means what you want to tell her you don't trust words to do it you want to force it by beating is abuse and woman don't allow a man beat you don't let him don't let him a man mistakenly beat you once and you keep quiet he will beat you five more times from the first day he lifts his hand up tell him it is written touch not my anointing 
do my prophets know her? Do my prophets? So see, but women can talk. Hey, that's why you're a man. Women are gifted to talk. Men are gifted to have shock absorbers. When she tell you, eat your stupid man, see your head. Nonsense. Bastard. Bastard. Mm. Mm. If it's getting too much, walk away. Walk away. And when you walk away, look for a brother who has Holy Ghost and chill with him. Pray in tongues. Fellowship in the world. Build spiritual strength. Come back home. Hey, darling. I missed you for the few minutes I was away, man. You know you're the best woman God ever gave. You're precious. You're glorious. You will keep her mouth quiet. Use goodness and shut her up. Don't you slap. It's God's goodness that leads men to repentance, not God's wickedness. Am I teaching good? I won't tell you what I'm not doing. I'm doing it in my own. I've never, I've, my children have never seen me by any mistake abuse my wife either physically or orally. Never. That my mouth mistakenly will open and tell my wife, idiot, it has never happened. Never. Never. I won't teach you what I don't do. You are the prophet of your family. You must speak good things because you will harvest it. No matter the anger, you will never hear me say, Stupid woman, from where now? Oh, eh, eh, never. Never. If I have that energy, that much energy, I will use it when I'm preaching. Shut fire! Glory to God, I feel like poop, poop, poop. Shut poop. Somebody do poop, poop, poop. I will finish it here so that when I go home, I will cool down. <laughs> Take it in, in good faith. Be a good man. Anything she tells you will not hold. But your own way, you speak it because you are the head. You gotta be careful. Mind your words. Because she's under, you're over. Mind your words. Your children are under, you're over. Mind your words. Mind your behavior. As a husband, you have the greatest responsibility. If a house is successful, the man is a first suspect. When the family in Eden broke down, even though God knows it was Eve's idea, who did God look for? Anywhere there's a marital problem, the first suspect is who? the husband everywhere there's a marital problem the first suspect is the husband Adam where are thou Adam God knew it was Eve there's nothing that took him by surprise but he has to hold the head responsive so as a husband you must be responsible enough to be held responsive don't be bitter don't be angry don't keep malice in our home we don't understand malice at all Mama is the, is the wrongest person for money. She can't even keep money. If she's not happy with something, we must talk about it now. Now, now, now. Honey, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. I'm praying. Wait first. Let prayer wait. Come, come. We have to sort this matter up. Bible says if you have a gift to the altar and you remember your brother is not happy, drop it first. Come, come, come. We have to set. No malice in my house. No malice. And we are not pretending. Immediately we'll fix it. Everybody will continue. We have my children know they have never seen me and their mother that we are keeping malice for one day. They've never seen it in my house. Sometimes they even look at us and think whether we're pretending. They look at their mother and look at me. Okay. You people are okay. Yes, we're okay. Okay. That's true. And we're not pretending. We're just being ourselves. If we're not happy, we talk, we talk about it quickly and we resolve it. We don't let it linger. Because when you allow it linger, you've created room for Satan. Satan will come and sit there where there is space. And he will begin to manipulate things. Never give the devil room. Refuse to be malicious in your family. Deal with it instantly and resolve it there. And if two of you cannot resolve it, 
seek for your pastor immediately pastor we have a misunderstanding this is what i said from the word of god i quoted one two three scriptures for my husband he has no scripture and he's insisting <laughs> bro <laughs> you don't have scripture you are a fast three and you're still <laughs> I you still insisting. Shut up, my friend. Are you not ashamed? You don't even get scripture. Even if now your scripture, you know if you could. See you. <laughs> Go and do what your wife has said. See, she has three scriptures. <laughs> Everything must be backed by the word of God. Mama and I, from the day we got married, we decided that anything we cannot find in scripture will not suffice in our home. So, in our home, is scriptures that rule. Honey, we have to do this. Why? It is written it is written i had to study the bible well and look for all the scriptures that will support my position we have to do this why because it is written one two three four okay you have it that's the way it works in my house and the word of god is final authority so we don't have an issue that we cannot resolve because we have the work the manual for wisdom we don't refer to proverbs in the village we don't look for traditional sayings in our village my people say we don't have such things in my house in my place they say no we don't have it we have what does the word say the word of god is final authority and we can do these things because we are born of god amen we can do it because we're born of god don't first of all blame your wife ask yourself when there's a problem in your marriage please if you're making those take this one is a good place to close this service when there's a situation in your home ask yourself don't don't blame your wife don't blame your husband the moment there's a misunderstanding doesn't matter where it comes from the first thing to ask yourself before engaging is am i walking in love have i been praying have i been praying for my wife or for my husband have i lived in forgiveness do i tolerate her Am I walking in understanding? You ask yourself such questions. After you have ticked yes, 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 yes to all the boxes before you engage. Don't first of all look at your spouse's responsibility. First of all cross check your own responsibility and be sure you have kept your own part of it. A wife will put, have I been submissive? Am I respectful? Am I honoring my husband? Have I done my domestic responsibilities well? As a man, am I caring? Have I been doing my responsibilities at home? Am I showing tolerance as Jesus shows? And for single people in the service, begin to train yourself to walk in love. As a single person, begin to train yourself to tolerate people help people take care of themselves begin to look after people be responsible as a single person because that same training is what will work for you in your home it's a divine responsibility and you must make up your mind today never to model your marriage after the world model your marriage after christ model your marriage after christ don't copy oprah winfrey don't copy all those people copy christ christ is your model christ is your standard thank you lord jesus every man in this house say i have capacity because i am born of god to love my wife tolerate my wife and care for my wife and honor my wife i have capacity to help my wife be the best person she can ever be in life i'm not intimidated by the success of my wife i'm not inferior to anybody i have what it takes to be the best husband and i'm committed to being the best husband that it ever produced i didn't hear a good amen